Hello dear friends. So in this video I will assemble the new Prusa Mark IV. I've been waiting for it uh, quite a while so I'm very happy that I finally received it and I'm gonna record a time lapse and then afterwards hopefully we'll have a good printing experience. Okay, enjoy. See you. Okay, we're almost finished and yeah it took me I guess roughly around 10 hours I took my time and here we are so this is the setup screen and it guides you nicely through the entire process And it's checking everything bit by bit. Yeah, so for instance, you know the fans. And yeah. I used the, the webcam to, to record this, so excuse me, my wobbling around. I always try to set it up so you can see what you're supposed to see. Now uh, they want you to touch the the nozzle in the right moment. Okay, you have a countdown and then in the right moment you have to touch it and then the bed sensor is uh, yeah tested. So that worked. Excuse me, please, for the background noise. Now it's testing the end stops. The ones of you that have already assembled um, one of the former printers, they know this procedure. It tests every axis. So this is the min max. Y axis the same procedure. It doesn't have any mechanical end stops anymore. Like other printers might still have. And now it's starting to probe the bed a little bit, going up to Z max.
<clears throat> and then now it's checking the nozzle heat and the heat bed. Excuse me, please, for my bad voice. I was very sick. It also heats quite quickly. And the bed is also quicker than on the M. K three that I have. Okay, that passed. Now the gearbox alignment is going to be tested. Okay, there's no filament in there. This is what they want. So in this step they want you to loosen those screws here and unlock the lock as shown in the picture and then it will test the gearbox. Once it's done you can tighten the screws again and they tell you exactly how much so you shouldn't over tighten it so this is why i'm taking my time here because uh, i wasn't really sure how much so i'm going back and forth and trying to find the the right torque on the on the screw i speeded up this part because i really took my time and afterwards, when you finish, you can just flip the back the, the part cooling fan that has a magnet. It's really handy. And then this step is finished. In the next step, it will test the filament sensor. And uh, yeah, I'm reading now, so yeah. And then once again, yes, and then it tells you to get some filament. They only give you two samples, so not a roll like they did before. So you can see this is all you get. And yeah, but it's enough to do a small little test print. And it saves weight for the shipping, so I guess that was the why they decided to to only send uh, such a little amount. Okay, now I'm adding some filament. <clears throat> and it checked all the, the parameters here. So everything works as it's uh, supposed to. Because on my MK3S, the automatic filament f uh, feeding uh, didn't work. But, uh, so I'm very happy that it works now on the new one. So the sensor now is more reliable than on the MK3S. So going back and forth, checking everything. So everything is fine. Yeah, happy printing. I've done it. And the next step it wants you to connect to the to the Wi-Fi. I've skipped that part so far. It's okay for me to print from the USB stick and that's what I decided to do. And I've uh, loaded the filament. Here it's PLA and uh, then afterwards I printed a small test print. Yeah, so this is the automatic 
loading process it detects that uh, it has to go up to 215 <coughs> and then it heats up really really quickly so it's waiting for the temperature to, to heat up still not at 215 okay now it's it's coding So here it comes, slowly but steady. Okay, that looks great. After the purging process, it cools down to 170 degrees. It uses the nozzle for probing the surface, so it doesn't have a pindar probe anymore. And then afterwards, it will go up to the printing temperature again. So this is a little bit different than on the other process that I have known before. So the ramming noise is the testing of the end stops, you know, the end positions. It doesn't have any physical end stops there anymore. And this is the noise that you have heard. So now it's going to touch probe the surface. The interesting thing is that it's going to probe only in the areas that you will be printing on. So in this case, I've been printing this name tag and it only is probe, going to probe in the area where the name tag is going to be printed. In some areas, it only probes once and in others, it probes two or three times. And this is what it's doing now. And afterwards, it heats up again to the printing temperature and it does this every time. So the calibration that you had to do before, depending on the, the spring steel sheet that you are using, uh, doesn't exist in, anymore. Um, it doesn't matter because it always does this probing. It takes a little bit longer, but it's more precise. So the first layer is even better than it was before. Oh, it purges right besides the part that will print. It's really cool. Maybe you're wondering why my voice sounds so funny. So this is now a voiceover and when I recorded the video I was really, really sick and I hardly had a, a voice. So this is one reason why I did the voice over now. And yeah, but I hope it's okay. And I also cut out uh, the waiting time so you don't s sit in front of the, the video just uh, waiting for things to heat up. Uh, so it's a little bit quicker now than it's in reality. <clears throat> but in comparison to the MK3S that I also have, it is much, much quicker. And uh, yeah, the first layer is really, really nice. Uh, even better than it was before. And the speed is incredible, the printing speed. So you have uh, speed profiles um, on the slicer and you have uh, normal ones, but even the normal ones are quicker than uh, they have been before.
After 15 minutes, the print was finished. This was uh, not a, a speed profile, I guess, you know, it wasn't that fast. I really like the progress bar. So the, the screen turns from a grayish appearance to an orange one, which gives you uh, optically um, an imagination how long it will take. So this is the result, it looks really nice, it sticks really well, and you can see that the purge line is right next to the object. Yeah, this is what it looks like. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it. See you next time. Bye-bye.